Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to replace the AIO in a desktop computer. So I was having this issue with my desktop where when I was trying to like edit videos or do some other kind of involved processing, um, the computer would just completely shut off on me. And I thought maybe it was the power supply, but I just replaced that not too long ago. And then I looked down at it and the cooler light was just flashing erratically, so I thought maybe that's something we should replace, and that's what we did. Before we get started, I just want to apologize for the camera quality of the video. I didn't realize the camera was out of focus until about halfway through, so please bear with me. And with that said, let's get started. I purchased a Deepcool Castle 120R liquid CPU cooler from Amazon. Um, it got pretty solid reviews and was about $60 or so. Um, thought we'd give it a try. So I've got the computer opened up here, laying down on the table, and I'm going to go ahead and start removing the old CPU cooler, uh, starting with the fan and radiator assembly that's mounted to the back of the unit. There's four screws back here. Just go ahead and loosen those, and then that should free that entire radiator assembly. Next, we're going to start unscrewing the screws that hold down the CPU cooler to the motherboard. And there's just four screws at each corner. I'll go ahead and speed this part of the video up. Once you have all the screws disconnected, go ahead and unplug um, all of the wiring harnesses from the motherboard that power the fan and the cooling unit. Before you do that though, definitely snap a couple pictures of the locations where those wiring harnesses are plugged in to the motherboard. And I'll go ahead and speed this part up as well. So we'll go ahead and open up the new cooler here. Inside the box, we've got the mounting back plate, of course, the cooler itself. Just set that aside. Then you've got various mounting hardware for different motherboard configurations. See if we can get the camera to focus. There we go. Extension cable for the RGB connection. Some more mounting hardware. There's that back plate. screws for the fan, and of course a new fan that will mount onto the radiator. Here's a more uh, up close view of the cooler itself and the radiator. It looks like it's Decently well built for sixty dollars, it'll do the job. A 
we'll just go ahead and move the computer case off to the side a little bit. See if we can get the camera to actually focus for the rest of the video. There we go. And now we'll start assembling the mounting hardware that goes onto the cooler itself. Here I'm just checking the size of the mounting bracket to make sure it, that's the correct one. They sent in two different sizes with the cooler itself. Then after a little bit of reading the directions, finally figured out which screws mount these brackets to the cooler itself. Go ahead and get this guy flipped around. Line up one of the brackets with the mounting holes and start attaching it. Now that we've got one side on, we can go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Next, we'll have to flip the case upright and take off the other side panel so that we can remove the old mounting bracket and install the new one. It was right about here when I realized that you couldn't see what I was doing. So we'll go ahead and turn the computer on its other side. You can see that mounting bracket there. Um, again, it, it just goes through the four holes of the motherboard. Let's see if we can get a good, good shot. Those four studs go straight through. It should line up nicely. Next, we're going to take the spacers that came with the new CPU cooler and push those on to the studs that are poking through the motherboard. They've got kind of a tight, snug fit, which will allow the um, back plate to not fall off when we flip the computer back on its side. So as you can see, we've got the computer flipped back down on its side with the CPU facing upright. I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol and clean off the CPU so that we can reapply the thermal paste. So get yourself a small container, pour a little bit of that isopropyl alcohol into it. We're going to use that to clean the uh, CPU off. Before we use the alcohol though, we'll start with just a dry paper towel. So we'll go ahead and wipe the excess thermal paste off of the CPU. Get as much of it off as you can in this step. And then next we're going to take another paper towel dipped in the isopropyl alcohol, kind of wring it out a little bit, and then go ahead and wipe the surface of the CPU again with that damp towel. Next we're going to take a Q-tip, dip it in the isopropyl alcohol, and then just use that to kind of get into the nooks and crannies of the CPU around the outside edge. You'd be surprised how much additional thermal paste there was after doing this twice.
come back here with the wet paper towel again. Let's give one last scrub down with that. Then we're going to open up our thermal paste and squeeze some onto the CPU. You want to dot about the same diameter as the capacitors just to the left of the CPU there. It's a good size reference. And now we're ready to install the cooler onto the CPU. When you do this, you're going to want to kind of spot check to make sure that the hoses versus other components uh, in your case are going to have enough room to route and you know not be kinked as they make their way to the radiator and also not interfere with any other um, auxiliary items like your RAM or graphics card, etc. So you're just going to line the cooler mounting brackets up with those four posts from the back plate and then go ahead and install the cap nuts on each of the posts. At this point you just want the nuts to be, you know, just tight enough, snugged up to the mounting bracket. After this we'll come back with a screwdriver and tighten them down in a star formation so that we get a nice even seal of that cooler onto the CPU itself and an even distribution of thermal paste between those two entities. And this is what I was talking about with the star formation with the screwdriver. We're going to start in one corner get that tightened down and move across to the next screw, get that tightened down and then to the adjacent screw, tighten that down and then finally across one more time and tighten down that last screw. And then just one more time around the horn to make sure everything is tightened as far down as it can go. Now that we have that unit attached, we're going to go ahead and mount up the radiator and fan. Now I would recommend pre-mounting the fan to the radiator and then installing the cooler onto the CPU itself. It would make your life a lot easier, um, but this way it works too. So you're just going to take four of the long bolts that come with the kit and run those through the fan and then they'll tighten into some threads on the radiator itself. And then once you've got that done, same process Again, the long bolts go through the case. In my case, I have a, another fan here. Bolts go through that and then tighten into the radiator once again. And the last step is to connect all the wiring harnesses for the new cooler and fan up to your motherboard just as they were with the previous cooler.
And there you have it. We plugged it back in, turned it on, and don't seem to be having any problems anymore. Was able to edit this video on this computer with the new cooler installed. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give us a like, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Thanks, everyone.